Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So we had news last night that Janet, Janet Yellen's come out with a statement kind of saying that December is the best case scenario for the Fed to raise rates uh, as to the strength of the US economy, which has sent the US dollar um, soaring much higher, caused a little bit of a sell-off on the equity markets, especially over in Asia, where actually higher interest rates would, imp would impact their potential exports to the US, because obviously a stronger US dollar makes it harder for them to be competitive um, in that part of the world. So some markets not reacting that well to it. The US there, it had a slight dip, but ultimately it's a sign of the strength of the US economy if the Fed thinks that the economy strong enough to raise rates as soon as December. But obviously, the non-farms report um, tomorrow is going to be the main driver for that. The figure is very, very weak. You can't see how Janet Yellen can really kind of push that forward. But if it comes in particularly strong, um, that just adds more, more fuel to the fire. So we're in the middle of two ranges right now with the US 30, with the 17747 being potential support and 18112 being potential resistance. Moving quickly on to the UK 100, which typically has quite a big commodity um, focus. And commodities are in a bit of a tailspin right now because of that stronger US dollar, uh, and they're obviously all priced in dollars, um, that can really uh, start to crimp demand for those products as it gets more expensive relative to their local currencies. So we've got a very negative candle. This is firmly a graveyard doji formation that we've got here, uh, almost turning into a head and shoulders formation. We have the shoulder, the neck, and the other shoulder. If we continue to see pressure on the UK 100 uh, below 6300, it could go that little bit lower. We're obviously quite far away from that right now. 6415 potential resistance. Uh, we're coming up close to that 21 period SMA and we're miles away from 55 period SMA. Other technicals relatively neutral, divergence visible on the slow stochastic. Moving on to Japan 225. Um, which is actually one of the few uh, areas that are breaking up higher at the moment, uh, breaking above 19104. We failed to close above, uh, well, that much higher from there right now. Longer term potential target would be 20,087. We've got a long time before we get to that close. We're trading above both moving averages. Other technicals are relatively neutral, but you do have a declining histogram in the MACD and the slow stochastic is overbought, but there's not yet a signal to sell. So this is an interesting one for Japan. Um, because normally, uh, since mid-October, each time we get close to these levels, it gets pushed back down. Could be a technical breakout, so keep an eye on that later on today. Looking at dollar-yen, the dollar has begun to uh, soar a bit higher, finally getting up towards 121.83, which is potential resistance, a uh, broken resistance from December 2014. That's kind of been in play uh, since then. And um, great day yesterday. We have been lower today, but it's pushing on higher at the moment towards the top end of this range. Uh, and we're only just beginning the day as that news kind of filters in from Janet Yellen's speech last night. Then having a quick look at West Texas crude, it reversed course pretty quickly as you get that short-term impact or the sudden shock of uh, the fact that the US rates might rise sooner, that the dollar is going to begin to gain extra additional strength. That might be short-term demand factors, but 45.85 is the potential support. And depending on your own views on uh, West Texas crude, there's two levels here to look at. 42 and close to 50, so 49.40, and then you've got this uh, level here at 45.85, almost slap bang in the middle. Um, West Texas crude should be very interesting for swing traders at the moment, depending if you think those levels are going to remain in play or not. And gold's just getting absolutely smashed at the moment. Uh, it's come off maybe about six or six percent since. Um, the start of those uh, those conversations from the FOMC. We're getting very close to $1,100 now. Very negative candle yesterday. That was falling on from a very negative candle the day before and the day before and the day before. It's what, six days uh, losses in a row. In fact, let me just quickly check to see what that, uh, that movement actually is. 6.3% in just a number of uh, two weeks. So that's not very long at all. Um, as quick as it went up, it came back down again. If it breaks 1100, you're looking at um, 1072. And if you obviously do get that rate hike, which is slowly getting priced in right now, if it doesn't happen, if, for example, non farm payrolls is absolutely terrible on Friday, gold could be a very interesting one to watch because it's maybe a little bit like a spring right now because it's coiling up as if we are going to get a rate hike in December. So if non farms is terrible, um, that obviously could be quite interesting for the interest rate sensitive yellow metal. Euro dollar coming off as well. 
So the euro is actually losing a lot of momentum. It's down against the sterling. It's down against uh, the, the US dollar. Euro dollar is a very interesting FX pair to, um, to be involved with right now because obviously ECB is talking about their own monetary stimulus, printing more money, quantitative easing, whereas the dollar might just be increasing their rates in December. Um, but this can obviously change very, very quickly depending on the macro situation. But one spot, 0.786 has been the potential support in play. That's where we're slowly creeping towards, it feels. And we do have uh, a number of oversold indicators in the RSI. So early warning signal, there could be a reversal. The same for the slow stochastic. So this is a strategic level. Will it bounce or will it break through? Well, that's up to you guys at home to this side. So finishing up with GBP USD, um, sterling, uh, weathering the storm a little bit better than the euro. Um, one spot, 54.24 is potential support, though it kind of feels now that it's been up and down through this so many times. In the shorter time frames, uh, you can just see that it has been in play, but it's not really been, well, maybe it has because you can just see the closing prices are so close to it. I think it, it is still firmly in play, actually. Now I'm looking at it more closely. One spot, 54.24 is the strategic level. Uh, moving averages are flattening out. Uh, other technical pretty neutral, uh, but declining highs. So you've got a high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, and that's where we are right now. So economic data-wise, we have uh, retail sales from the Eurozone. So that's probably going to be interesting for your dollar. You've got the NPC minutes for the Bank of England. That's going to be very important for GBP USD because now that the US are beginning to get a little bit more hardcore about their own rates, people have discounted the UK, but maybe Kearney is going to come out with an interesting statement, uh, which could cause a little bit of volatility on cable and the UK 100. Make sure you don't miss that. That's at 12 noon uh, UK time or 1 p.m. Uh, European time over here in Germany. Now looking at uh, employment data during uh, due at 1.30 UK time, uh, and that gives you an idea of what to expect. And obviously Friday, even though we do have industrial production from Germany, it's all about non-farm payrolls. This result feels more important than ever, and the markets have never been um, kind of a, a more interesting juncture in recent memory where it can have such a big impact should non-farm payrolls come out better or worse than expected it can have big ramifications if it comes in as expected that's going to be a little bit of an anti-climax um, but make sure you don't miss out on our live webinar go to support and live trader events and make sure that you sign up to michael houston and colin trakinski's live webinar which promises to be pretty exciting so keep your eye on the chart forum guys make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next